Welcome to part 4 of 4. Assume that the top flight speed is equal to the jet velocity as a test sample of top flight speed while ignoring aerodynamic drag. Entering in this test sample into the net thrust formula, we start out with a jet velocity of 193 feet per second, subtracting a flight speed of 193 feet per second, which equals zero, multiplied times 0.6 pounds per second mass airflow, which is also equal to zero, then zero divided into 32.2 feet per second squared gravitational acceleration on Earth equals zero. Notice that the net thrust reaches zero when the flight speed equals the jet velocity, ignoring aerodynamic drag, which proves that the net thrust formula is a function of the law of conservation of momentum applied to jet propulsion applications during flight. However, it is not correct to calculate that this RC flying wing will actually reach 193 feet per second flight speed since aerodynamic drag has not yet been factored into the calculation. To calculate the actual maximum flight speed including net thrust lost to aerodynamic drag when the EDF unit is operating at maximum power output, either a differential equation can be established or algebraic polynomial equations using graphs with recalculations starting from the 50% of jet velocity point upward until net thrust cancels out with both flight speed and aerodynamic drag increases can also be used as well. Doing so, I calculated that the maximum flight speed of this RC flying wing will reach is 65% of the maximum jet velocity. To prove this as mathematical fact, observe the following calculations below. So we take a flight speed of 65% of the jet velocity, so 0.65 times 193 feet per second jet velocity to equal a top flight speed of 125.45 feet per second. Aerodynamic drag in pounds occurred aerodynamic drag in pounds incurred by wings would be equal to a flat airfoil coefficient of drag of 0 0.09 multiplied times an air density of 0 0.0023 slugs per cubic foot times the ratio of 36 square inches divided by 144, which is the number of square inches to one square foot, multiply times 125.45 feet per second flight speed quantity squared. This entire calculation divided by two equals 0 0.41 pounds drag incurred by the wings when at a flight speed of 125.45 feet per second. Next, we calculate the aerodynamic drag in pounds incurred by the nose cone slash fuselage. The nose cone has an aerodynamic drag coefficient of 0.5 multiplied times an air density of 0 0.0023 slugs per cubic foot. Then we take the projected frontal area of 13 square inches and we divide it into 144 which is the number of square inches to a square foot. We have to take the projected frontal area in square feet so we can convert 13 inches, uh, 13 square inches into square feet by dividing it into 144. Then next, we multiply it, the flight speed of 125.45 feet per second quantity squared. This entire calculation divided by 2.82 pounds of aerodynamic drag incurred by nose cone fuselage when at a flight speed of 125.45 feet per second. So if we add up the aerodynamic drag incurred when at 125.45 feet per second flight speed at the wings and at the fuselage slash nose cone, that comes to 0 0.41 pounds aerodynamic drag plus 0.82 pounds aerodynamic drag to equal a total overall aerodynamic drag when at 125.45 feet per second flight speed of 1.23 pounds of aerodynamic drag opposing 
the flying wings forward motion and its net thrust. Net thrust at 125.45 feet per second flight speed when at max power is equal to the jet velocity of 193 feet per second. Subtract 125.45, whatever that equals, times 0.6 pounds per second mass airflow. This entire calculation then divided into gravitational acceleration of 32.2 feet per second squared will equal 1.26 pounds net thrust. So at a flight speed of 125.45 feet per second, the available net thrust is 1.26 pounds, ignoring aerodynamic drag. However, factoring in net thrust lost from aerodynamic drag at 125.45 feet per second, the actual net thrust at a flight speed of 125.45 feet per second will equal 1.26 pounds net thrust minus 1.23 pounds drag to equal virtually 0 pounds net thrust or 0 0.03 pounds net thrust. We can round that approximately to 0. 0 0.03 rounded to approximately 0 pounds net thrust at 125.45 feet per second flight speed when aerodynamic drag is also factored into the calculation. As flight speed increases and net thrust reaches zero, this equates to zero pushing force forward or thrust due to the increasing constraints of aerodynamic drag over and jet velocity limit. In this particular EDF propelled RC flying wing application based on the airframe specifications and the EDF propulsion unit power plant, the maximum flight speed will equal 125.45 feet per second or 65% of the jet velocity due to the net thrust losses incurred to overcome aerodynamic drag and jet velocity limits. The airflow speed entering the EDF inlet duct is approximately equal to the oncoming airflow and will have little or no aerodynamic drag as is the case with the EDF duct structure itself as well as assuming that the duct walls are as thin and streamlined as possible. The approximate maximum flight speed on this given EDF RC flying wing application will equal 125.45 feet per second. Multiplied times 15 and divided by 22, we can convert the feet per second to miles per hour. So the top flight speed of this particular application, an EDF, RC flying wing with the given airframe specifications will reach a top speed of 85.5 miles per hour which is equal to 125.45 feet per second. 193 feet per second is equal to 131.6 miles per hour so due to the aerodynamic drag that's incurred the top speed reduces down to 85.5 miles per hour when this particular EDF application is at maximum power. So if we want to convert that to kilometers per hour, 85.5 times 1.6, so that's 136.8 kilometers per hour top speed. As for those EDF RC flying wing operators who desire a hand launch at a slightly positive wing angle of attack, launch acceleration, this is a very critical characteristic for a successful launch into flight because you don't want to be underpowered on a hand launch. Assume that the wing loading, wing aspect ratio, takeoff weight, and wing area are within the correct limits to, to permit aerodynamic lift greater than takeoff weight when a certain minimum airspeed over the wings occurs. Assume that the EDF RC flying wing has a takeoff weight of 3.2 pounds and requires a minimum airspeed of 25, sec uh, 25 feet per second to develop lift slightly greater than the takeoff weight of 3.2 pounds. The safe acceptable launch acceleration desired for hand launch in this particular case would equal the minimum flight speed attained within one second acceleration time. So if we take 25 feet per second and divide it by one second, we would require a minimum acceleration of 25 feet per second squared for a safe and successful hand launch. Assume that the EDF RC flying wing is held at rest slightly angled positive while the EDF propulsion unit is operating at maximum power setting with 
4.3 pounds of static thrust. Also assume that the launch is a let go launch in which the operator does not throw the flying wing but simply releases it at a slightly positive angle to the horizon. The RC flying wing weighs 3.2 pounds but has static thrust much greater than its weight. Again, force thrust is mass airflow times acceleration or mass air acceleration. So force is mass in pounds per second times acceleration and jet velocity to get thrust. So we take a force thrust of 4.3 pounds and convert that into Newton's force by multiplying 4.3 pounds static thrust times 4.45 which is equal to 19.14 newtons. The mass of the airplane itself is 3.2 pounds divided by 2.2 to equal 1.45 kilograms. Acceleration is defined also as force divided by mass. If we rearrange the force is equal to mass times acceleration formula. So we enter in the values for acceleration a force of 19.14 newtons divided by a mass of 1.45 kilograms. The acceleration in this case will be 13.2 meters per second squared. There's 3.28 feet to a meter, so when we multiply 13.2 meters per second squared times 3.28, the launch acceleration will equal 43.3 feet per second squared. With a thrust 134% greater than the weight of the airplane itself, the approximate launch acceleration when EDF is at maximum power setting will equal 43.3 feet per second squared or 173% of the required launch acceleration. As long as the flying wing is pointed slightly at an angle positive to the horizon, the EDF RC flying wing will release almost instantly into flight in less than a second similar to that of a rocket propelled air vehicle. After sufficient flight speed and altitude is reached, the operator can lower the power setting to a cruise flight speed to conserve LiPo power for longer flight times, but at lower flight speeds below 85.5 miles per hour. If the operator seeks to fly at max power setting nonstop to find out how long the EDF RC flying wing can actually fly before low voltage warning conditions occur and power down landing is initiated, residual power left to operate flight controls. All that is required is to rate the power consumption to the rated capacity of the LiPo. At maximum power, the LiPo DC power output will equal 22.2 volts DC times 60 amps DC equaling 13.3 I'm sorry, 1,332 watts of DC power. The discharge rate in coulombs is simply the maximum rate at which the amperes current can be released and also limited by the brushless electronic speed controller. However, the MAH capacity of 5,000 MAH can determine how long this EDF unit can operate at full power setting. So we divide 5,000 milliamp hour into 1,000 to equal 5 amp hours maximum capacity. So then we take 22.2 volts DC times 5 amp hours to calculate a maximum watt hour output of 111 watt hours or a continuous stream of 111 watts for one hour. That is the maximum capacity. This LiPo will provide a maximum DC power output of 1100 I'm sorry, 111 watts for one continual hour, which is also which also equates continual power output of 222 watts for 30 minutes, 444 watts for 15 minutes, 888 watts for 7.5 minutes, 1776 watts for 3.75 minutes. So we simply take 60 minutes, an entire hour and we divide it into the ratio of the maximum wattage output of 1322 divided by the maximum watt hours capacity output 111 and so if we were at maximum power output of 1322 watts this LiPo would 
power the EDF for only 5 minutes, 5.03 minutes. At maximum power, the LiPo will provide maximum power for approximately 5 minutes. At 50% power, we take 1322 watts times 0.5, that would be 666 watts. The LiPo will provide power to the EDF for 60 minutes, divide 60 minutes, then divided into the ratio of 666 watts, divided into 111 watt hours equals 10 minutes. So at 50% power you can fly at that power setting for 10 minutes. Now at 25% power we would take 1332 watts times 0.25 would equal 333 watts. The light bulb will provide power to the EDF for 60 minutes divided into the ratio of 333 watts divided into 111 watt hours which equals 20 minutes. 25 percent power is around the minimum power setting to prevent wing stall. The approximate flight time based on the given LiPo specifications when EDF is operating between 25 percent and 100 percent power settings are between 5 to 20 minutes. This lecture has defined all propulsion mechanics of a 90 millimeter EDF unit including the in-flight applications and limitations when used to propel an RC flying wing. Please use the information in this lecture to assist in your EDF RC airplane projects, builds, sizing, or performance calculations. Thank you for watching this video. Like, subscribe, and have a great day.